Good morning and welcome again to my YouTube channel Pain Free Partha and also my website which has got slides www.painfreepartha.com. Today's topic is about acute pain relief recent ones. So this is a little exhaustive topic but there may be some recent drugs. There may be some older drugs with recent use and there may be some drugs which have been used. We don't know the cause it has gone like. So whenever I talk anything in academics, I put a big salute to the legendary teacher of two centuries. Now, most of the times we see the building. But what is the foundation? Now, this is the foundation of acute pain relief. Now, there are membrane phospholipids. These are converted into arachidonic acid by phospholipase A2. And this arachidonic acid is converted into cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase. This is COX-1. COX means cyclooxygenase. Cyclooxygenase 1, which is constitutive, which is there in the body. It is there for gastrointestinal mucosal integrity, platelet aggregation, renal function. What does NSAIDs do? NSAIDs block COX-1 and COX-2. What is this COX-2? Whenever you get an injury, there is development of one more cyclooxygenase. That is called COX-2. So, if you have a drug, it can block this, but not block this. Maybe we may get advantages with this. So that is what is called COX-2 selective inhibitors or COX-2 preferential inhibitors. Now we got one more problem here. The arachidonic acid also gives up lipoxygenase. Now your COX is inhibited, the more of arachidonic acid will go through the lipoxygenase pathway. This will cause leukotrains to increase, that will cause bronchospasm. Now you can understand the things. Whenever you give NSAIDs, there is gastrointestinal mucosal problem, there is platelet aggregation problem, there is renal function problem. And because the lipoxygenase pathway is more, we get bronchospasm. These are the four principal side effects. Unless you understand the basics, it is difficult to mug up these things. Now, what is the steroid role? Steroids can inhibit this. Steroids is a phospholipase 2 inhibitor. There is no arachidonic acid only in the membrane. So that is the advantage of steroid as an analgesic. Now this is what I want to tell. COX-1 is already there here and COX-2 is there when there is an injury. Now we have the Tripathi's classification, non-selective COX, Lornoxicum, Salis H, Ketorolac, Mephnomic Acid, Pyroxicum, Ibuprofen, that is so Naproxen. Preferential COX-2 inhibition. Inhibit but preferentially it is diclofenac, azaclofen, meloxicum. These coxibs, you know, silicoxib, uterocoxib, paracoxib, or selective. So they don't have an anti inflammatory actions, that is, medicine. they kill the pain, but they don't have anti inflammatory. So this is how this is classified. We are using these drugs, ibuprofen, ketoprofen, diclofen, acaseclofen. What are the worries? So many drugs have gone and stayed. Some have only stayed and hit the market. Now we will go to some of the drugs. Lornoxic is available in the market left and right. Lornoxicum alone, Lornoxicum with person. Non-selective toxicity. See here, non selective. 4 milligram, 8 milligram tablets. 8 milligram for injection is available. Osteoarthritis, post surgery, sciatica. It's an adjunct to opioids. Some amount of nausea, vomiting. Some amount of bronchospasm. But if you give paracetamol, it is less castrated. My I feel is it is less effective than our ibuprofen or ketorolac. I have not done any randomized trials by my clinical practice. I can say this is less effective. 
There are a lot of studies. 16 milligram side. This usually we use 8 milligram BD. Efficacy of Lornaxicum. Yes. 16 milligram preoperative 16 milligram Lornaxicum after septoplasty. So there is one more advantage of this Lornaxicum in SIDs. They have done Kitora like a lot of IVRAs, but we can also use Lornaxicum with lignocaine for bias block. This is Meloxicum is a COX-2 selective. 7.5 milligrams orally rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, yes, if the patient is having rheumatoid arthritis, if the patient is having VZ. So this, yes, especially they include, but still this type of COX-2 selection is slightly preferred. Very operative, see here 2021. 30 milligrams IVF meloxicum, total knee replacement, reduced opioid consumption. Preoperative meloxicum, this is 2020. Better efficacy after total hip replacement. They have found out very insignificant side effects. Now, after this, oxicums, chloronoxicum, meloxicum, all these things. Coxips entered the field. Shook the market. So, in I think around 15 years ago, I have used a lot of pericoxib. That is, well, the coxib, it comes as pericoxib IV in lab coli. It's excellent if you give preoperatively. I don't know because of so possibility of worsening strokes and heart attacks. This well, the coxib exited from the market. Certain com coxips have come out victorious after cuddles. This helicoxib is available as oral formulation. Acute pain is 400 milligrams, not 50, 100. Selicoxib is 400 milligrams. They have used all these things for so many chronic pain conditions. See here again, systematic review and meta-analysis published in 2022. Selicoxib is an effective, safe strategy for post-op pain relief after total knee replacement. Now we go to Itericoxib. There are a lot of formulations. It's hitting the market. People are using boxes and boxes and crores of market share. 60 milligram daily. Itericoxib, two hours effective drug concentration. Pro inflammatory and better pain relief. Pro inflammatory mediators are decreased and better analgesia. So, one more point if you want to tell here. That means if it is shown that is it responsible for a reduction of chronic post-surgical pain, that has to be studied. 90 milligram is good enough for these patients of mandibular fracture surgeries under GA. This is in 2020. Even in other surgeries, ictericoxib in abdominal hysterectomies. Now, oh, I started using this palmacoxib, 2 milligram tablet is available. Randomized, yes, celicoxib and palmacoxib is also what they say in osteoarthritis. It is non inferior. Safety profile is same. So, palmacoxib started to use now. Nephopam, acute pain relief. See, the advantage of nephopam is people are not using those things. I don't know the reason. It has got some effect on the neuropathic component. It decreases shivering. Ideal for perioperative use nephopam. It decreases the neuropathic component. It decreases shivering. Right? You are you going on using diclofenac and this thing. Why can't we switch over to nephopam? Ideal for neuropathic. This is what is the problem is a possible neuropsychiatric problem. Let us put the drug into question. Otherwise, this drug is going to hit the market. If it is going to be somewhat changed and this complication is decreased. Reduced to periop morphine. A lot of articles in 2016-17 have come in this. Now we go to Dadalac, Kitoralac, Kitoralac, a preferential COX-2 inhibitor does not inhibit platelet aggregations. Worth thinking in a perioperative. Nabumitone, 
is a non acidic NSAID pro drug. Pro drug, see here, metabolizes the drug into naphthyl acetic acid. This naphthyl acetic acid has got less effect on the stomach, less effect on the kidneys. Query post operative pain preferentially blocks COX 2. Now, I have already told this why it should cause side effects. So, in the kidneys, prostaglandins are vasodilators. If you block this, done. In the platelets, prostaglandins are good. In the, in the stomach, prostaglandins are good. So, you want to have side effects. Why these side effects are coming? This is because the cyclooxygenase 1 and 2 are good for so many things. Nanoformulated NSAIDs, engineering technologies that use nanoparticles for the targeted delivery and controlled release. They may decrease the dose. They may decrease the dosage frequency. For example, azoclofenacin nanoformulatical, it may be used only once a day or once for two days. They are low dose micronized NSAIDs, micro ionized NSAIDs. To produce submicron sized drug particles, which are 20 times smaller than the original size. The particles, not the big tablet. The original particle is 20 times smaller. The theory is there is an increased drug surface area, which will enhance the absorption of the drug. So we need to give less drugs. The total volume is less, the total amount is less because. We have increased the surface area of absorption and absorption is better. So that is why the nano basis is better in decreasing the dose and in decreasing the side effects. Now we have indomethacin as Tivorbax and diclofenac as Zorvalax. Now this is the basic biotechnology of using diclofenac as Diclofenac nanoparticle. There are a lot of things. You can, it is not that a nanoparticle is very difficult. It is being also here. She is my wife and doing nanoparticle impregnated or silver nanoparticle impregnated in plant extracts. So, Zorvalex is available in India. Nanomax gel is available in India. It doesn't mean it is gone out. Now, this is about nanoparticles. Now, we come up to hydrogen sulfide releasing drugs. You have a drug. What is that? Azaclofenac. That is an anti inflammatory drug. As soon as it is entering the body, it releases hydrogen sulfide also because hydrogen sulfide has got vasodilatory properties and anti inflammatory properties. So, it goes in, it has got anti inflammation, but also vasodilates the stomach. So, there is less of GA toxicity and CVA toxicity and naproxen and diclofenac are still in the preclinical stage. Combined NSAIDs with H2S make release this H2S vasodilatation, analgesic, reduces edema, antioxidants. All these properties are for the H2S and we can decrease the NSAIDs. We can decrease the side effects of NSAIDs. Synods and NSAIDs. So this is no is extra. Synods and no sets. Nitric oxide NSAIDs. Nitric oxide is a potent vasoprotective or GA tract protective. So you combine nitric oxide with acyclofenac and take the tablet. So nitric oxide is vasodilate, it will not cause gastritis and your NSAID starts to act. Go inside and get your platelet, anti-platelet, anti-inflammatory and analgesic action. So nitric oxide plus ibuprofen. Nitric oxide with flurbiprofen are available. We have a COX LOX inhibitors. While hypoxin is also may reduce, see here. Licophilone is the first drug to inhibit both, 2 to 5 milligrams. What they say is decreased allodynia and hyperalgesia. If you could combine these drugs, Cox Locks inhibitors like Licophilone into the market with affordable price, 
then we are targeting the chronic pain also with an acute pain. Polyserenin is a new opioid, effective in the management of moderate to severe pain and appears to be associated with lower risk of nausea and vomiting. Evaluating nose acute post-operative in adults in 2022, 1 mg per ml maximum of 3 mg IV onset is within 2 to 5 minutes. Polyserenin. Now, we have already talked about technology and we will start giving some more extra technology. See, for example, 5% lidocaine patch in sternotomy. Put a lidocaine patch. Liposomal bupivacaine is depo form, non concentric or microscopic structures consisting of a passport lipid bilayer encapsulating an aqueous core. There is an aqueous core, there is a passport lipid bilayer. There may be unilamellar, only one lamella, or multi lamella. Unilamellar liposome, single lipid phosphate layer. Now I am going in. Multivesicular liposomes. Characteristic drug release pattern leading to increased stability and length or longer duration of action. Now this is what is called the phospholipid bilayer. This is unilamellar. Only lamella is only one. This is the echo score where the drug is there. Now you can see this is multilamellar. Multilamellar liposomes. This is how a liposomal bupivacaine will look like. They have first approved as single dose wound infiltration with hemorrhoidectomy and bunionectomy. And they are used for a lot of epidurals, peripheral nerve blocks, intercostal nerve blocks, etc. The sole fraction of bupivacaine is the free non liposome. Because, see here, multilamellar liposomes do not cross blood brain barrier. Plain bupivacaine in the lysosomal is systemically absorbed. There is a gradual sustained release from the multilamellar receptors. Large amount of drug is there, but no systemic toxicity. 600 milligrams, see bupivacaine. 600 milligrams, but per day it is going to be 200 milligrams per day. Better than placebo, but with bupivacaine, we have to question. We can plan, we put a bupivacaine liposomal for an intercostal neuralgia, see the effect, and then plan RFA. We should be worried about the cost of this. Toxicity profile is similar, less blood levels after injection than bupivacaine. See here. Blood levels are less after bupivacaine. Epidural and block use still is slightly on the doubt because of probably of the cost. There are few drugs which are not actually recent, but not much used nowadays. Probably they have not hit the market. For example, tapindalol, which I have used left and right, thousands of cases. It's a good drug. Novel, centrally active, dual mechanism. We can use for acute post-operative pain as a narcotic. We can use it for a neuropathic pain also somewhat effective. See, because it has got a dual mechanism of action. See here, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Available as 50 milligrams, 70 milligrams, ER preparations and possibly injections have come. Now, flupertin. I have not seen flupertin as an injection. But this is an excellent drug. I have used even for cancer pain. Patient is on opioids because it is an NMD antagonist. We can use it in empty stomach also. No gastritis. It is like ketamine. It is like dextromethorphan. NMD antagonism is the mechanism of action. So it is equally sensitive but very severe pain, unbearable pain and all. It doesn't it causes less sedation. Not much sedation. Empty stomach is possible. Probably sedation because flupertin is an NMD antagonist. I have used for 10 months, 12 months continuously. What I feel is I usually get less efficiency and a mild sedation. We can use it for breakthrough pain in malignancies. We can use this flupertin 100 mg TDS for 2 days to decrease our morphine tolerance. 
in malignant pain. So to summarize, why do we need to new? Why do we need new? Because unless I'll tell again, Cox 1, Cox 2, Cox 1 is intuitive and Cox 2 is protective mode. Newer drugs like Coxips, Oxycons, nanotechnologies, nitric oxide technologies and hydrogen sulfate technologies have come. Lignocaine patches have come. A lot of drugs. Nabifenol. So many drugs. Nephropam. So many drugs are there. Liposomal. We need to make advances to remind static. Thank you.